Amen. Today, we're going over the Day of Atonement, going over um, what it was, what it's supposed to, the thoughts that's supposed to elicit, what it's supposed to do in, in the mind of God's chosen people. Also, um, if I have enough time, I'm trying to show as well that what the reward is for partaking in the Day of Atonement and what the reward is if you do not partake in the Day of Atonement as well. So, what I'm going to start off with, first quote I'm going to start off with is from 1 Amar 57, paragraph 2. 1 Amar 57, paragraph 2 and 3. I'm going to take only snippets out of this, um, out of these two quotes. The first one says, The gospel message for this time is comprised in the third angel's message, which embraces which, which embraces the messages of the first and second angel, and which is, to be, which is to be proclaimed everywhere, for it is present truth. This message is to go forth with great distinctness and power. It is not, it is not to be clouded by human theories and sophistries. So in this first quote, Sister White states that the third angel's message also has in it the first and the second angel. So under the third, you will see the attributes of the first and the second. And you will see the same thing in the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is the yearly, is the last work, is the completed work. It's the completion work, which is the, the third angel message. And under the Day of Atonement, you also have characteristics of the first and second under the Day of Atonement as well. Um, paragraph 3 of 1MR57, it says, A great work is... A great work is to be done in setting before men the saving truths of the gospel. To present these truths is the work of the third angel's message. The whole gospel is embraced in the third angel's message. I'm jumping down, it says, The third angel's message, one second, the third angel's message must do its work of, where am I, sorry, must do its work of separating from the churches a people who will take their stand on a platform of eternal truth. Our message is the life and death message. And what I'm trying to portray as well is that the service of the Day of Atonement <clears throat> shows a separation for, from showing with those who partake and, and those who do not partake. And it's a life and death message because your reward is either life or death. All right, so first we want to start off showing firstly what a Day of Atonement is. <clears throat> Go to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus 23, verses 26 to 32. Leviticus 23, 26 to 32. <clears throat> Leviticus 23. Verses 26 to 32, and it says, in verse 23, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So, <clears throat> continue on, I'm sorry. And it says, And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever so it be that shall not be afflicted in that day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So if you do not partake in the day of atonement, the service of the day of atonement, you will be cut off. And we know cut off is also synonymous with being bound off. So before I go into anything further, I'm placing that the Day of Atonement, the service for the priest, starts at midnight. So I'm put DOA. I'm put over here. DOA for the Day of Atonement. And we're gonna continue on and develop that thought. Verse 30. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. And ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even ye shall celebrate your Sabbath. 
So what you're going to see is there's going to be a affliction of soul here by God's people. And the prophets show that by their experience. We're going to continue and develop that thought and show how. And if you don't afflict your soul in that time, you will be cut off for not partaking in that service of the Day of Atonement. Now, <clears throat> go to Leviticus 16, verses 2 to 10. Leviticus 16, verses 2 to 10. And it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he may, that, sorry, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron, thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullet for a sin offering and a ram offering, and a ram for a burnt offering. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel, two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. So I want to point out that was verse, verse 5 in Leviticus 16. There's two kids of goats. There's two goats. There's one. Oh yeah, we didn't even get to that part yet, but I'll just put it there now. There's one one goat for the sin offering. There's another goat for the scapegoat. That will be cast into the wilderness when it takes takes upon the sins of Israel. And what I'm gonna I'll just leave it there actually. Um verse six. And it says, and Aaron shall offer his, and Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself and make, make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take, take the, and, and he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And, and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. So the sin offering is for the Lord. So based upon this, <clears throat> see that the sin offering would typify the wise. Go through and show that as well. Scapegoat typify the foolish. Because Sister White said that this scapegoat typifies Satan when he's cast into the wilderness. And the wilderness will be the earth for the thousand years as well. Verse... 9. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's, Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. Verse 10. But the goat on, on, which, on, which, the lot, on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be, sh shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let, and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. So the scapegoat is now is, is going to be let off into the wilderness bearing the sins of Israel. Um, let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews 9 and verse 2. Hebrews 9 verse 2. And it says, For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And over it, the, the, the cherubims of glory, shattering the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Verse 6, now when these things 
things were, were, were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. Verse 7. But, but into the second went, went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, not, not, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. So, this is where the priest goes in here only once a year. This is the yearly service. The Day of Atonement is showing the yearly service where they go, where the high priest go and deal with the sins of Israel. So, this is the yearly service. The holy place in the courtyard would typify the daily service. So, these two apartments would show forth the courtyard and, and the holy place, and this would be the most holy place. And in Hebrews 9, 7, the last, the last phrase after the last comment says, and for the errors of the people. So, Sister White states that error is sin, and we're going to read that quote after. So, this is where... There's a special work of sin being dealt with in the most holy place. Um, let's put M H P for most holy. This is the court. This is the holy. This is from T D G. I think it's today. Today with God, I'm not sure exactly, but she says. Every error is sin, and every sin has its origins with Satan. So, in Hebrews 9, 7, when, when the Lord says that the high priest must go in and make an atonement for the errors of the people of Israel, he's making atonement for the sin that God's people have committed. Mm -hmm. Did that say sin or sin? It says sin. Sin. I'll put a... All right, now we're going to see why this had to happen. It's, it's showing forth that there's two cleansings. There's a cleansing, the daily work, and there's a cleansing in the yearly work. Sister White plainly states that at both times is a yearly work, but yeah, both times is a yearly work, and the daily work is a prep work showing forth the yearly work. So you can see that this, this will be a type pointing to this anti-type. But we're going to get to those quotes as we continue on. In Great Controversy, page 399.4, GC 399.4, it says, In like manner, the types which re relate, re relate to the second advent must be fulfilled at the time appointed out in the symbolic service. Under the, under the mosaic system, the cleansing of the sanctuary, or the great day of atonement. So day of atonement is a cleansing. It's a cleansing work that must be done on the day of atonement. And it's a cleansing work that is also done during the, during the daily, sorry. Both is cleansing work. But this, this cleansing work is showing forth the last cleansing work that must be done for the errors. Of the people. Continue on, it says, saying that this cleansing work, continuing on, occurred on the 10th day of the 7th month, Leviticus 16, 29 to 34, when the high priest, may, having, may, having made an atonement for Israel and thus removed their sins from the sanctuary, came forth and blessed the people. So it was believed that Christ, our great high, high priest, would appear to purify the earth by the destruction of sin and sinners and to bless his waiting people with immortality. The 10th day, the seventh month, the great day of atonement, the time of the cleansing of the sanctuary, which, which in the year 1844 fell upon the 22nd of October, was regarded as the time of the Lord's coming. And yeah, I'll stop there. Um, so... She states again that this is a cleansing work, and she also says that this is a purifying, purifying work. So, on the 10th day of the 7th month, on October 22nd, for the Millerites, 1844, this is a time 
of cleansing and purifying God's pure people from from error, from sin. Continue um continue on. We're gonna read from five MR manuscript releases, volume five, page five, paragraph two. Manuscript releases, volume five, page five, paragraph two. Five MR five point two. It says, We are now living in a solemn period of the anti typical Day of Atonement. In the type, the sins of the people were were on the atonement day to be called to mind and repented of. So on this day of atonement, there must be a repentance of sin. There's a repentance of sin on the Day of Atonement. So, excuse me, at midnight as well, when, when the Lord reveals himself unto the wise, they will repent of sin. And we're going to see that with a number of prophets, the prophets and God's people throughout time. It says, in the type, the sins of the people were, were on, the day, on the Atonement Day to be called to mind and repented of. It was a time of humiliation and affliction of soul. Time of humiliation and affliction of soul. The greatest care was the, the greatest care was enjoined that every part of the service be be sorry one second. The greatest care the greatest care was enjoined that every part of the service be be attended be attended to with becoming reverence lest the anger of the Lord be displayed. The high priest was the high priest was required to to make make the most careful and solemn preparation and he must guard himself from the utmost diligence from all contamination how much more while the anti when the anti-typical atonement is going on in heaven should those who minister in sacred things be holy be ye whole be ye clean that bear the vessels of the lord so this is why it clearly states that upon the day of atonement it is a time period where it is humiliation, it's solemn, there's a cleansing, a purifying from the sin, there's affliction, and there's a repentance all in this one day, which is typified, which is, which is also, also happening at midnight for the wise priests. Um, and I'm going to keep hammering the same thought over and, and again, having more witnesses for that. Um, what a great controversy. Page 418, paragraph 2. 418, paragraph 2. GC, 418, paragraph 2. And it says, Such was the work that went on day by day throughout the year. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the daily work that is going on day by day throughout the year. The sins of Israel were thus transferred to the sanctuary. So in the daily work, you see the same thing, the cleansing, a purifying. There's repentance here as well. There's affliction of soul. All the things you see here, you will see here as well. That's why it says, why it says that under the third, you see the first and second as well. So it's the same thing with the, san the sanctuary. With the third part of the sanctuary is typified by the first and second part of the sanctuary. Continue on, it says, The sins of Israel were thus transferred to the sanctuary, and a special work became necessary for their removal. So the special work is taken care of on the tenth day of the seventh month. And it says, God commanded that an atonement be made for, the, for, for each of the sacred part, apartments. He shall make he shall make an atonement for the holy place because, because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel and because of their transgression and all their sins, and so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. An atonement was also to be made for the altar to cleanse it and hollow it from the uncleanliness of the children of Israel. So Sister White says again that there's a cleansing work that must be done during the Day of Atonement in the Most Holy Place. It's a cleansing work during the daily, 
It's a cleansing work during the yearly as well. Both are teaching the same thing. But this one, she says, has a special work. Now I'm going to read from Great Controversy, page 6, sorry, page 419, paragraph 1, GC 419.1. I'm going to read the first two sentences out of there. First two sentences. GC 419.1. And it says, once a year, Once a year, on the great day of atonement, the priests enter the most holy place for the cleansing of the sanctuary. The work they per performed completed the yearly round of ministration. So the work on the day of atonement is the last work that must be done that completes the whole year's atonement. So without this, the work will not be complete. The work is done by the third step in the third part of the sanctuary. Jumping now to paragraph 2 and it says, And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon, upon the head of the live goat and confess, and, and, and confess over him all, all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all the transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities onto a land not inhabited. So, this last paragraph here, this last paragraph here is showing the reward for the scapegoat, which is Satan and all of his, all of his subjects. So, I'm continuing on actually. Um, but before, before the goat is cast off into the wilderness for, for the thousand years, there's a work that the wise have to do. And now, um, and now I'm going to that. Mm. We'll read from Great Controversy, page 420, about two paragraphs down, GC 420. I'm going to read the first sentence and the last sentence. It says, Important truths concerning the atonement are taught by the typical service. So we need to know the typical service to know what will happen to God's people at the end, end of time. Jumping now to the last, um, last sentence, it says, By the offering of the blood, the sinner acknowledged the authority of the law, confessed his guilt and transgression, and expressed his desire for pardon through faith in a Redeemer to come. But he was not yet entirely released from the condemnation of the law. So he's not, he's not entirely, entirely released from the condemnation during the daily work. And the yearly work is what finishes that work that, that releases God's people, the true, from the condemnation of the law. Now I'm reading from Stephen Haskell, SDP, Story of Daniel the Prophet, page 157, paragraph 3. SDP 157 paragraph 3 In the autumn on the 10th day of the 7th month came the crowning service of the year so the day of atonement is the crowning service it is the ending is the last one all other services were but a preparation for this so Stephen Haskell is saying that the work of the daily ministration, preparation, all of, all of this work pointed to the yearly. This was, all of this was just a preparation for what was supposed to happen upon the Day of Atonement, upon the, at the yearly work, during the yearly work. Continuing on, it says, day by day, the sins of the people had been transferred in type and shadow to the priests and the sanctuary. So the preparation is the type. And once a year, these were, and once a year, these were to be, to be cleaned and the sins forever removed. 
and now I'm doing the yearly work, that is where your sins are fully removed from, from the sanctuary and from God's mind. Now I'll read Great Controversy, page 419, paragraph 3. Going back to 419 of Great Controversy, but now we're reading paragraph 3. I'm just going to move this, actually, and put it higher. Put affliction up here. And it says, The whole ceremony was designed to impress the Israelites with the holiness of of God and his abhorrence of sin and further to show them that they to to show them that that they could not come in in contact with sin without becoming polluted every man was required to afflict his soul while this work of atonement was going forward all business was to be laid aside and the whole congregation of Israel were to spend the day in solemn humiliation before God with prayer fasting and deep searching of heart so now since white plainly shows there's going to be three steps there's three steps during the day of atonement and those three steps we're going to see that god's prophets and his people have all went through these same three steps so step of prayer fasting and deep humiliation of heart Go to Desire Ages, page 431, paragraph 2. Desire Ages, 431, paragraph 2. And it says, In order to succeed in such a, a, a conflict, they must come, come to the work in a different spirit. Their faith must be strengthened by fervent prayer, fasting, and humiliation of heart. So, there's a conflict that is coming at midnight. This is the great conflict. But we must come here with a different spirit. In the spirit of prayer, fervent prayer, fasting, and humiliation of heart. They must be emptied of self and filled with the spirit and power of God. Earning perseverance, supplication to God and faith. Faith that leads to, to entire dependence upon God and unreserved consecration to his work can alone avail, avail to bring men the Holy Spirit's aid in the battle against principalities and powers and, ruler, and, and, and the rulers of darkness of this world and wicked, and wicked spirits in the high places. So, to get through the conflict, they must go through the same thing that, that is shown by the Day of Atonement. The prayer fasting and deep searching of heart or deep humiliation of heart they must go through that because that spirit is what will help them overcome in that conflict um huh, okay read from Last day events, last day events, page 263, paragraph 2, last day events, LDE 263.2. Two. says that God's people will have a deep sense of their shortcomings, and as they review their lives, their hopes will sink. But remembering the greatness of God's mercy and their own sincere repentance, they would plead his promises made through Christ to helpless, repenting sinners. <clears throat> their faith will not fail because their prayers are not immediately answered. They will lay hold of the strength of God as Jacob laid hold of the angel and and, and the language of their souls will be, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. So, we see, we know that 
when Jacob laid hold upon the angel that, that was laying hold of Christ. And this was during Jacob's Mar vision. And in this time period, in, 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 this, in that time, Jacob shone forth the actions of the Day of Atonement as well in that, in that story where he humbled himself. He, he prayed to the Lord at that time and he was searching his heart and he saw that he was, he was still wrong. He asked God for a blessing. So you see these three things, then the blessing comes after. And we'll continue showing that as we continue on. So now we're going to read from, now we're going to see um, Job. Job, had, Job went through the same, the same thing. And Sister White plainly sets that straight in Prophets and, um, Prophets and Kings. I apologize. 164.2 Prophets and Kings 164.2 PK 164.2 and it says the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind Job 38 verse 1 and revealed to his servant the might of his power. When Job caught a glimpse of his creator, he abhorred himself and repented in dust and ashes. Then the Lord was able to bless him abundantly and to make his last years the best of his life. So Job saw his sins. He he, he saw his sins. And he felt and he and he repented in dust and ashes. And the only way you can get dust and ashes on you is if you fall into dust. So he fell as one dead because seeing, seeing his, his own sin contrasted to seeing Christ. And after he repented and abhorred himself in dust and ashes, that's when the Lord blessed him abundantly. So you see the same process going through and then you're being blessed abundantly at the cross. Now I'm going to read Bible Echo, December 3rd, 1894, paragraph 5. Bible Echo, December 3rd, 1894, paragraph 5. And it says, The seraphim dwelt in the presence of Jesus, yet they veiled with their wings their faces and their feet. They looked upon the king in his beauty and covered themselves. When Isaiah saw the glory of God, his soul was prostrated in the dust. Because, because of the unclouded vision he was graciously permitted to, to behold, he was filled with self-abasement. This will ever be the effect upon the human mind when the beams of the Son of Righteousness shine gloriously upon the soul. The light of the glory of God will, will re reveal all hidden evil and bring the soul to the place of humble confession. As the increasing glory of Christ is, is revealed, the human agent will see no glory in himself, for the concealed deformity of, of his soul is laid bare, and self-esteem and self-glorying are extinguished. Self dies, and Christ lives. So, Isaiah as well went through the same thing. He humbled himself. He humbles, humbled himself in confession as well. Go ahead. I just wanted to point out so that people have heard what you said. She said in that quote that this will always be the what on their mind? This, this will ever be the effect upon the human mind when the beams of the Son of Righteousness shine gloriously upon the soul. So something does happen to the person Amen. when that takes place. Mm -hmm. Because I've, I've heard someone say that nothing happens to the person when they go through that experience, there Amen. is no effect. It's just symbolic. Amen. But in the quote, it, it, she said, this is the effect. And so it's not only symbolic, it really is going to happen to the individual when they get to that point. Amen. The, when God's wise see him, this, this, like Sister White says, this will ever be the effect upon the human mind when they see the beings of the Son of Righteousness. They will have the same experience that they have that that God's people, Israel, had upon the Day of Atonement. A day of prayer, fasting, and deep searching of heart, and humbling themselves 
humbling and sh and letting the Lord take take the forefront so that they can succeed in the conflict that they are in. So this is why plainly states here as well that there's revealed in this time period is hidden evil that needs to be cleansed from from God's people. So once once that hidden evil is cleansed, that hidden evil is also I mean once that hidden evil is revealed, sorry, that hidden evil is cleansed as well. And when that hidden evil is cleansed, that is when Sister White says self dies. So self dies in this time period and Christ lives. That is Christ living within you. That is divinity and humanity. That that's the work that, that is going on in this time period. This is humanity working with divinity at that point. All right. Um, oh. One second. Mm, I'm sorry. One, I missed one quote. This is from Great Controversy, page 421, paragraph 3. GC 421.3 GC 421.3 and it says and as the and, and, and as the typical cleansing of the earthly was accomplished by the removal of sins by which it had been polluted, so the actual cleansing of the heavenly is to be accomplished by the removal or blotting out of the sins which are there recorded. So under this time, there has to be, there's a blotting out of sin, but um, put the blotting out here and later on in the study and a part two of this study, going to continue on and showing that here's the blotting out this is the blotting out of the out, this is the blotting out of the sins of the wise out of out of the book book of remembrance and this is the blotting out of the wicked out of the book of life this is a twofold work of blotting out one for the wise and one for the foolish but sister white says continue on says but before this can be accomplished, before the blood and outwork can be accomplished, there must be an examination of, of the books of, the rec of record to determine who, through repentance of sin, through the repentance of the sin during this time period. So God investigates the books here to see who has done the, the work of, of, of the Day of Atonement to actually receive the blood and out of their sins. I'm going to start over again. It says, but before this can be accomplished, there must be an examination of the books of record to determine who, through repentance of sin and faith in Christ, are entitled to the benefits of his atonement. The cleansing of the sanctuary, therefore, involves a work of investigation. So the examination of the books, this is a time period of investigation. There's an investigation before the blotting out. Continuing on, it says, a work of judgment. This work, this work must be performed prior to the coming of Christ to redeem his people. For when he comes, his reward is with him to give every man according to his works. And their reward is the blotting out of their sins. The, the thousand years is a reward as well, but that's go on. Um, so going back to where it was, this um, last quote I just read was from Bible Echo, December 3rd, 1894, paragraph 5, where Sister White shows that Isaiah had hidden evil within him and he repented and, and he humbled himself in the dust. And that, that sin and that iniquity was taken, taken from him and he was cleansed from those sins. And that is where self dies. He's emptied fully of self and Christ lives within him. Um, now we're going to Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah 3, 
1 to 5. Zechariah 3, 1 to 5. <clears throat> and it says, And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee. O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a, a brand plucked out of the fire? Now, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake, and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him, and, and unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. And I said, Let him set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. So, so this is showing the work of the Day of Atonement as well. And this is why it clearly states that, and we're going to read that in the next chapter, that he is, Joshua, the high priest, is investigated, and then he gets his reward. And the reward is the fair mitre upon his head and clothed with a change of garments, a change of raiment. And Sister White says in CCH, 352.2 CCH 352.2 Councils for the Church 352.2 She says Zechariah's vision of Joshua and the angel applies with peculiar force to the experience of God's people in the closing up of the great day of atonement. The remnant church will be brought into great trial and distress. That is the conflict that will be going on. They will be in great trial and distress because of conflict. Those who keep... Those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus will fill the eye of the dragon and his host. Satan numbers, numbers the world as his subjects. He has gained control of the apostate churches, but here's a little company that are resisting his supremacy. If he could block them from the earth, his triumph would be complete. So in here, we see that both are trying to do, <clears throat> excuse me, a work of blotting out Christ and Satan. Satan is trying to do a work of blotting out God's people fully by eradicating them from off the earth, killing them by any means necessary. And Christ is trying to do a work of blotting out their sins. Continue on, it says, As he influenced the heathen nations to destroy Israel, so in the near future he will stir up the wicked powers of earth to destroy the people of God. All will, be, all will be required to render obedience to human edicts in violation of the divine law. Those who will be true to God and to duty will be menaced, denounced, and prescribed. They will be going through this time period, be menaced, denounced, and prescribed. Just as in Sister White's vision where a house was prescribed three times by the Catholic procession. They will be, she says, um... Menaced, that is a conflict that they will be going through because Satan, coming with the eye of a dragon, will be trying to destroy them. They'll be denounced and prescribed. Last sentence of this quote, this paragraph, it says, They will be betrayed by both parents and brethren and king folks and friends. Next, next paragraph says, Their only hope is in the mercy of God. Their only defense will be prayer. As Joshua was pleading before the angel, so the remnant church with brokenness of heart and, and earnest faith will plead for pardon and a deliverance through Jesus, their advocate. They are fully conscious of their of the sinfulness of their lives they see their weakness and unworthiness and as they look upon themselves they are ready to despair so that's why sister white states that they will have to come there the different kind of faith they will have to take on this test with a different mindset and that mindset has to be of prayer 
fasting and deep searching of heart because because they see that they they can't go go through this test on their own they have to lean upon christ their advocate to bring them through through this test and if they do not cling cling upon christ they will they'll be led to despair So, yes, just as um, Isaiah saw the sinfulness of his life in this time period, and from midnight to the cross, Isaiah sees the sinfulness of his life, and Joshua the high priest sees the same exact thing. Job sees the same exact thing, and um, Jacob sees the same exact thing. And the only thing that will bring them out of this conflict is if they just cling upon Christ. That's that is that is their duty they have to go to the conflict with prayer fasting and deep searching of heart and now um so so we just went through showing that before they before they receive their reward which is the fear, martyr, and the change of garments and the blotting of their sins, they must go through this conflict, this time period where, where they feel that where all earthly support will be cut off because she says that they'll be betrayed by parents, brethren, kinfolks, and friends. So now, once they've passed this, this time period, they would enter here where they get their reward. Both wise and foolish get their reward from the cross from point B on to midnight cry. And I'm going to delve a little bit into the reward, but I'm going to pick this up at a later study with um, the Feast of Tabernacles because that also shows the reward for the wise and the foolish. And we're going to go back to Great Controversy, page 419, paragraph 1. GC 419, paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. It says, Once a year, on the great Day of Atonement, the priests entered the most holy place for the cleansing of the sanctuary. The work there performed completed the yearly round of ministration. On the Day of Atonement, two kids, and the two kids are showing the sin offering and the scapegoat, the wise and the foolish, because the sin offering is Christ and the scapegoat is Satan. So that's showing the wise and the foolish. On the day of atonement, two kids of the goats were brought to the door of the tabernacle and lots were cast upon them. One lot, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. <clears throat> the goat upon which for the lot for the Lord was was to be slain as a sin offering for the people. And the priest was was to bring bring his blood within the veil and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. The blood was also sprinkled upon the altar of incense that was before the veil. Paragraph 2. It says, And Aaron shall lay both, both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat. So this happens... <laughs> After all the sins have been repented of and placed upon and given to the high priest so that the high priest can place it upon the scapegoat. And uh, continue on. It says, and shall send him away by the hand of the fit man into the wilderness. So from the cross, from point B over to midnight cry, this is now where the high priest is taking that scapegoat and throwing it out into the wilderness. Sorry, the fit man is taking it, taking the scapegoat, apologize, and throwing it out into the wilderness. Um, and, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness, and the goat shall bear upon him all, all their iniquities onto a land not inhabited. The scapegoat came no more into the camp of Israel, and the man who led him away was required to wash himself and his clothing with water before returning to the camp. Now I'm going to Great Controversy. Page 658, paragraph 1. And now she's going to show 
she's gonna show what that scapegoat typifies, like like we stated before, is Satan. And that thousand years is the the day of atonement typifies a thousand years as well. GC 658.1, it says, Now the event takes place foreshadowed in the last solemn service of the Day of Atonement. While, while the ministration in the holies, the Holy of Holies had been completed, and the sins of Israel had been removed from the sanctuary by virtue of the blood of the sin offering, then the scapegoat was presented alive before the Lord. And and in the presence of the and, and in the presence of the congregation, the high priest confessed over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel. And and all and all their transgressions, in sorry, and all the transgressions in in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat. In like manner, when the work of atonement in the heavenly sanctuary has been completed, then in the presence of God, the heavenly angels and the, and the hosts and the hosts of the redeemed, the sins of God, the, the sins the sins of God's people will be placed upon Satan. He he will be declared guilty. Of all the evil which he has caused them to commit. So that scapegoat is typifying Satan. It's the sins being placed upon Satan. Continue on, it says, and, and as a scapegoat was sent sent away into a land not 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 inhabited, so Satan would be banished to the desolate earth and uninhabited and dreary wilderness. So that scapegoat, which is typifying Satan. At the end of the world, which is also terrifying, the foolish, their reward is that thousand years where they'd be tossed into the wilderness, where into darkness, where they have no light. There's no chance for them to receive light. And, is, and, and at the final, at the final work, down at the end of the world, at the close, um, at the close probation, that is where Satan cannot tempt any human beings at all. Um, Going on to paragraph two, the sorry, the revelator foretells the banishment of Satan and the condition of chaos and desolation to which to, to which the earth the earth is, is, is to be reduced and, and he declares that his that this condition will exist for a thousand years. So this time period, the reward for the foolish will be in chaos and desolation. After presenting the scenes of the Lord's second coming and the destruction of the wicked, the prophecy continues. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, on, on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season so satan is the last one to be bound so when when the tears when the foolish are bound they're they're bound first and then after they're bound they're placed into the wilderness this dark time period which is put the thousand this is the thousand years they would reap what they sowed that's their reward um Going on to the next paragraph, it says, Here is to be the home of Satan, of Satan with, with his angels for a thousand years. Limited to, limited to the earth, he will not have access to, to other worlds to tempt and annoy those who have never fallen. It is in this sense that he is bound. There are none remaining upon whom he can exercise, exercise his power. He is wholly cut off. From the work of deception and ruin, which which for so many years has been his soul delight. So the foolish are cut off. They're bound and cut off because they have not went through the same same conflict and test. They have not went through the same process as the wise. They have not humbled themselves in the day of atonement and um and things in Leviticus. I think it was sixteen or. 
in 16 where it says that if you do not participate in the day of atonement in that work of humbling yourself and searching your heart you will be cut off so now we see in here that the ones that Satan tempt um the one that Satan the ones that Satan deceived they're cut off because they did not um humble themselves before the Lord they did not go through the same process as the wise and did not come to the day of atonement so they were cut off and their reward is destruction so um to end off we show that we see that the daily the daily work typifies the yearly ah that's another thing um under the atonements and this can also show the two temple cleansings as well under the atonements there are two works it's the daily and the yearly and we saw also that under the yearly work itself under the atonements there's two works but under the day of atonement per doa but under the day of atonement there's two works as well there's an investigation <laughs> and then after the investigation since the white states plainly that the blotting out the investigation happens before the blotting out <clears throat> so and we've shown that the daily points to the yearly so you can see all the yearly within the daily as well same thing with here where you have two under the atonements it's the daily and the yearly then under the day of atonement you still see the same two because they point to each other it's type and anti-type amen showing then showing a investigation and then a blotting out there's two separate works there's, there's two separate works under one work, so to say. And we also saw that the Day of Atonement is a special work of putting away of sin. And, and for the priests and the Levites and, and the Latin Father workers as well, it is a process where they have to, they'll be praying, fasting, deep searching of heart or humiliation of heart that they have to go through because that is what will bring them through the great conflict that the foolish priests put them through, what Satan puts them through. And the Lord investigates them in that time period, in that process to see if they, if, if they, if they hold to any of the promises that God has actually given them. And once they come out and show that they have held on to the promises that God has given them, this is where they will receive their reward which is the blotting out of their sins same with the foolish priests but on the flip side where they do not come up to the day of atonement do they do not partake in that feast in that in that yearly service so they 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 do not <clears throat> um partake in this service so they will be cut off and their reward is it blotting out as well, but it's a blotting out of their names out of the book of life. And they will be cast into the wilderness for a thousand years where their reward is destruction and chaos. And um, I'm going to go over more of the reward for the um, wise in the Feast of Tabernacles. Because then that will also bring out the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because... The seven days, the seven days of the feast is typifying the thousand years when they are, um, when the foolish are upon the earth. And the same thousand years is when they'll be in heaven um, enjoying the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, A.T. Jones shows that and Sister White also shows that these, the seven years, that thousand years is the Feast of Tabernacles. So that will be the reward. But. That's a later date. Um, <clears throat> shall we close with a word of prayer? Loving Father in heaven, I just thank you for your word, for your son, and for life, Lord. <clears throat> I pray that all, all, all th that, that was said may have been clear to minds and, and short, short, sweet, and to the point, Lord. I pray that you may help us to see, see you, your ways, and help us to humble ourselves to to search search our hearts for sin to pray and and to look look 
towards you for all, Lord, because that is the only way we will get through any conflict in life, Lord. I pray that you may help us be with our minds and our thoughts and allow us to see more light in your word, Lord. This is our prayer. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.